What is a love potion? A mixture of things to make someone think outside of their normal thinking. Mm. <laughs> I don't think we can jump on that. Is it a curse? Um, no, it's a... Uh, First thing it is, is most love potions are sorcerer's brews with a spell on That's what begins a love potion. But there's other things that are love potions that you may not realize. Um, any food that is served as an aphrodisiac is a love potion. Any food. Okay. Um, you know, they have these love cakes and you know, they have all things named as such. But things that are sold uh, or <laughs> consumed as a aphrodisiac. Like oysters? Oysters are one of the things. It, it becomes a love potion. Uh, three is a food labeled in a, with a lustful name. <laughs> Four is a drink toasted to future or current sexual partners or conquests. Uh, um, this kind of toasting is quite a common affair, without realizing it, that you're participating in it. Um, you know when there's wine in the glass and you tingle at a wedding to get a kiss? Do you realize that you're trying to put a soul bonding, your soul bonding under covenant to the person being married that you'll, you can enjoy their wedding night activities vicariously? That's what that, that's the origin of that. Okay? You think, oh, well, they're kissing, but you know, it's just a side. Oh, but you're actually doing if there's wine or water in the glass. Thank you for them to kiss. Is that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. When you start playing for them right. to kiss, okay. you're trying to create a soul bond, oh. bonding, so that you can vicariously enjoy their honeymoon activities. It's vicariously. Is that a lay down item or indirectly? Indirectly, that you'll have the sensations that they sense while they're because you're so enjoying so togetherness. Oh, okay. um, a Christmas cake or Christmas cookies and such are love potions. <laughs> There's a difference between a fruit cake and a Christmas cake. Okay. So that's or Christmas cookies. Or cookies, or uh, there's other things that are made specifically for Christmas, but it is orientated uh, towards the um, being a love potion. Okay? Mm -hmm. Remember, the things that come out of Christmas were came out of demon worship. Had nothing to do with Jesus, nothing to do with God the Father, or anything like that. It is strictly a celebration of Satan's birthday. And he wanted mankind and humankind to bind with him. And him, so that he can influence them in their sexual desires or activities. 
uh, six is an Easter cake or Easter buns or an Easter supper. That's why they have the ham at suppers, to mock God for the purpose of that they will do with their sexual activities what they choose and they will have um, the maximum enjoyment of it, you see. Their way. Um, seven is gifts, the candy gifts with uh, wishes of lust attached to them. Candies are one of the easiest ways to transfer, um, shall we say, the spirit of lust from one person to another or for one person to another. Because you are enjoying the pleasures of the flesh while consuming the candy and you're not aware of what's going on in your mind. <laughs> All funeral dinners, it used to be considered a, a rite of passage to have sex with the dead. And so food was served that you would be soul binding with the dead, and you'll never forget them that. Also, a love potion can be involved with a talisman given to attracting a mate. Now, your talisman can be those uh, so-called love braids that go around on the wrists that are very common. And all they need is a spell over them and you can be soul-tied or have a soul attachment because the dreams will be sexual in orientation to what's being given. And you can actually have a, a bonding take place in a dream that binds you to, the, to another person for the rest of your life. So, and there's lots of little talismans that are given. These love heart, you know, double heart lockets and all these sort of things. Those are talismans. Shells? shells. Certain seashells are talismans. Um, especially the knotted uh, bracelets and necklaces that are very often used for, because there's a spell given with, and a wish given on each one as they tie them. Um, a substance called fairy dust. Most of you wouldn't have had access to it because it's a rare item that's only available through a lot of the senior warlocks and witches have access to it, not common people. But if you're been if it's been used on you, your not only dreams, but you cannot concentrate um, learning new things. It's just, it just has this blocking to you. Is that why Peter Pan never wants to come out of Never Never Land? With that <laughs> yes. And that's why they mostly have women play as Peter Pan. Because it's, it's allowing that this sort of fairy dust why certain gay people that were called fairies and that? Because they can't come out of that um, spell that they're under because of it. Fairy dust in its spiritual form or, or just in the physical? It can be spiritual or it could be Either way, okay. in the physical dust. But it is, it's quite a potent dust material, whatever. Okay? And if you touch it, it absorbs instantly. Um, love potions are also things like crack cocaine, crystal meth, even weed. They call them recreational. 
illegal recreational drugs, but they're part of the love potion. And they can get you lusting after things that you just wouldn't believe you're, you're involved with. Um, Twelve is enhancement drugs that have become very popular in the um, marketing nowadays. Viagra, Cialis, and I think there's eight other ones. Um, Especially when you don't need the car anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, pheromone scents and perfumes. Certain um, deodorants are loaded with this, uh, pheromones, but they're part of the love potions. It goes all the way back to the worship of the giants and, and their apparatus. Um, certain types of warlock anointing. These anointings are designed to be love potions. Um, but they're done also to allow um, a male to bind with another male. And then they put them under enslavement. Um, date rate drugs that are put up by the uh, pharmacological uh, society, you know, the pharmacists and stuff like that. Uh, these are all love potions. These are the 15 sources of love potions. So, it's easy to get get them and be attacked by them without ever knowing what it is that's bothering you. And it's one of the reasons why people cannot surrender uh, Halloween and Christmas and uh, Cupid's Day and Easter because it's all part of this sexual stimulation of the love potion. <coughs> they want to be addicted to it. And you can't break something that you want to be addicted to. Well, how do they work? A lot of these things cause a numbness in the brain. So that you can become hypnotically entranced or in a trance of hypnosis. Or subject to hypnotic suggestions. When a, a hypnotist puts you, puts you under, what's called putting you under, what's happening is they have, their voice is causing an activity to take place in the sexual center of the brain. And just, it, it just overwhelms the whole brain because it starts releasing certain hormones that block everything else out. And what happens is, whatever he says, you have no will to resist. Because people like to mate. I don't know if you realize it, but people like to mate. Um, then you have sound entrancements. Now, um, certain harmonies or certain frequencies will, can put you into a trance. Some people can whistle and whoever they're whistling at goes into a, a, a super trance and they can't move. Um, they can't even think at times. They're just stunned. And then things can be said into them and they will go and do those things. Three is uh, calling on the soul of a dead person to occupy another's body for the purpose of having sex. 
with that er, with that dead person. Now, what happens is, um, let's say uh, a person's mate dies, and they pick somebody else up, but they don't, they can't function out of love for that person, so they got to move out of lust. And what they do is they literally uh, call the soul of their dead mate to enter their new mate for the purpose of having sex. Now, this is also done in incest. Let's say they love their grandmother or their mom that died. They will, will cause whatever their, whoever their mate is to go into a trance and call in that the soul of the dead relative to be in that person so they can have sex with that person. How come it always involves sex? Like, it seems everything... Well, usually love potions do. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay. And because it is the number one motivator under greed of all human activities. Motivator? Motivator. motivator. Sex sells the same. Yes, yeah. sex definitely sells. Uh, four is a lustful soul attachment. Can activate a love potion that's all, that you've had from the past. If somebody's lusting after you, and you've been one that has gone after having um, all these sexual stimulators from the past, you will be unable to resist them. They'll just overwhelm you. The lust in you will match the lust in them and, and, and you'll be bound. You'll, you'll marry them at a drop of a hat or you'll go out and have sex someplace at the drop of a hat and there'll be n no way you will stop. Three, or number five, I should say, is demonic manifestations of the potient user. So the one that gave out the potion can actually cause a demonic manifestation of them having sex with you in your dreams. And you will begin to accept it, that that's how it's supposed to be. That's reality. And you won't be able to, because it does something to the judgmental section and the moral section, you won't be able to say no to the advances. Blood sharing is number six. Blood sharing. You see, it creates special bonding. Blood bonds are very difficult to break. And sometimes they will cut fingers or cut hands and you bind with another person. And they call them old blood brothers. Or blood, a blood brother relationship, you know, where there's a male and female involved. But they're bound. And it's very difficult to unbind. Um, also, listening to uh, certain types of love songs that have a uh, beat that is similar to the heartbeat. And it shuts your brain down so that if you've had any of the potions, it becomes effective. You can't resist it anymore. It just takes over. Now, there's a number of signs when one of these love potions has been activated. Your dream and sleep disturbances are very much increased. Okay. 
You can have a, a longing for a mate. Um, sometimes that's all you can talk about is you got to find a mate and where's your mate? Why isn't God giving you a mate yet? Um, three is wishing for sex or uh, sexual attractions. Very common. Uh, four is mate judging. When you start looking at people and you see, oh, well, they're a one or they're a three or they're a five or seven or ten, ten out of ten, or, you know, uh, once you've moved into doing that, it's one of the key signs that you are under a love potion, the spell of a love potion, or have actually ingested a love potion. Because your body, like your mind automatically wants to judge others as to whether or not they would be good to have sex with. Uh, number five is masturbating while imagining a specific sexual partner as part of your affair. Six is daydreaming of having a certain sexual partner. You see, there's such a thing as daydreaming of, about having a mate, and there's another, another thing of having a sexual partner. Oh, I'd love to have sex with that person. Look how cute the buns are, you know? Things like that. And those are all activators to show that you're under, that you've con you're under the influence of that love potion. Seven is monologuing on what one does not have what one missed, or how life, um, life's fine, or the, the good things of life are just passed one by. All these are the influence of love potion. Taking in the love potion. That's why people enjoy Christmas so much and won't give it up. Or they Easter, they won't give it up because it activates and reinforces the love potion. The bears of that, the spells are not put on it. Now, if it's an individual to individual that has caused this love potion, then you're not, it's a simple acknowledgement of the potion and the soul bonding, uh, the confession of that, and, and the seeking forgiveness, declaring that you forgive yourself for being involved with it and then having a communion service to end it. But if you were involved in a group activity, say um, a stag party, stag after or shower, um, at a wedding or at uh, some special Easter service or Christmas service, where there was food served or uh, wine served, then it takes a church-wide communion to break it. Because you've entered into group, just one second, you've entered into group arrangement. Just what was condemned in Sodom and Gomorrah is their group sex activities. Um, the covenant of lust, this love potions and the lust uh, activities must be acknowledged before God and uh, invest as such. But they've got to be broken individually and as a group. And the sin of the lust and soul bondings and attachments um, must be broken in the communion, and then a rededication to Jesus and the ways of purity. 
otherwise it carries its weight. It cannot be is has uh, ongoing influence for as long as you live. Okay? And there's all sorts of things that can be involved there that, that pull, you know, that you can have combinations of different things all working at you on the same time. So it's very important to go back in your mind and start looking at, okay, where have I been involved with these things? Because if you don't go back to the root to start acknowledging the root, you will be totally overwhelmed in it. <laughs>